so the preliminary details uh, master mk who is a 2 year old male um, hailing from gorepalya wow. bangalore uh his informant is his mother and she is reliable he was admitted on 2nd november 2023 and examined on 8th november 2023 with the chief uh, he presented with the chief complaints of decreased activity since one month and fever since 15 days history of presenting illness the child was apparently normal one month ago when he became lethargic and had reduced activity which was insidious in onset gradually progressive associated with reduced appetite and irritability and uh, he had increased tiredness while playing the child also developed fever 15 days ago that was insidious in onset non progressive intermittent in nature more in the morning and evening it was of low grade it was not associated with rigors and it had relieved on medication uh, on further enquiry the mother had noticed that the child had become pale since one month there was no uh, history of yellowish discoloration of the skin or eyes there is no history of chest pain or breathlessness there is no history of swelling of the feet there was no history of loss of consciousness no history of reduced urine output no history of pain abdomen or altered bowel habits no history of blood and vomit or blood in stools no history of pale stools or dark urine no history of skin bleeds or gum bleeds no history of uh, passage of worms in stools there was no history of any drug intake or radiation exposure no history of weight loss night sweats or bone pains no history of uh, uh, consumption of any inedible substances there's no history of rash in on any part of the body or no is history of itching no history of cold cough or hurried breathing there is no history of increased frequency of micturition or excessive crying during micturition a uh, past history the patient has had uh, one uh, blood transfusion at the age of 1 year 6 months uh, no history of any medication intake no history of chronic diseases no history of tuberculosis asthma or epilepsy family history there was history of typhoid in elder brother one month ago uh, and he was hospitalized for the same for 3 days uh, there's no history of anemia jaundice any bleeding episodes gall stones in any of the family members there was no history of uh, blood transfusion in any of the family members no history of splenectomy in any family members uh, the uh, parents have uh, a non consanguineous marriage and uh, they have two children uh, one boy at 6 years and uh, the index case of 2 years birth history antenatal history uh, the mother was a registered case at the government hospital she has completed all the antenatal care visits all the scans were done and they were normal uh, iron and folic acid and calcium tablets were taken uh, injection tetanus both doses were taken uh, there is no history of gestational diabetes mellitus uh, uh, pregnancy induced hypertension thyroid disorders uh, or anemia in pregnancy natal history uh, an lscs uh, was carried out at 9 months of gestational age in view of previous lscs the birth weight of the child was 2.2 kg the baby is said to have cried at birth there was no nicu admission and the baby received uh, the three uh, doses of vaccines at birth uh, postnatal history the child was breastfed up to 2 3 months of age and he uh, was supplemented with cow's milk 3 months onwards there was no history of neonatal jaundice phototherapy exchange transfusion and the child uh, has been incompletely immunized up to uh, 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 from 1.5 months immunization history he has received the uh, birth dose the 6 10 and 14 weeks uh, vaccines but uh, after that the 9 month vaccine have not been taken so uh, uh, and uh, optional vaccines have also not been taken so he is incompletely immunized as per the national immunization schedule uh development history uh, all the milestones have been attained as per age in all the four domains diet history uh Uh, there there is a deficit of a uh, 4.8 grams uh, protein and uh, uh, calorie intake is uh, normal like surplus of 1.160 kilo calories uh, there was early weaning at 3 uh, months of age and since then he has been uh, given cow's milk the child consumes a predominantly vegetarian diet which uh, which has less um, micronutrient rich foods like fruits and vegetables social economic history the family belongs to lower middle class according to the modified kupuswami scale uh, 
summary a two year old male toddler born to a non consanguineous couple incompletely immunized belonging to lower middle class socio economic status with normal development consuming a diet which is deficit in protein and micronutrients presented with complaints of reduced activity and fever since 15 days information what you have gathered from the history a good history taking what is missing is what's your thought process at this point in time so summary always should tell the examiner or tell the clinician that what are you thinking about what is your thought process okay so all the information is there but it is abruptly ended as reduced activity and fever for 15 days so what are you thinking from your history and well taken negative history can you elaborate on that what you are thinking at this point examination you have not done what you are thinking at this point and can you put it in a better format Yes, ma'am. So, uh, at the end of the history taking, ma'am, the child has come with uh, reduced activity and fever since fifteen days, ma'am, and the mother has reported paleness, ma'am. So, I am thinking along the lines of uh, anemia, which is super added by infection, uh, that's causing fever, or fever which has caused anemia, ma'am. These are my two lines of thoughts. So, ah, uh, yeah, that's good. See, ah, uh, you are told the child has got anemia. you are uh, you don't know the cause anemia and infection is the cause and you have taken so much of history about complications and other things you you, you want to add that also yes ma'am so uh, there is no uh, cardiovascular complication ma'am uh, since there is no history of uh, pedal edema there is no palpitation chest pain nothing is there ma'am uh, and uh, there is no hemo evidence of ongoing hemolysis is not there ma'am because uh, there is no yellowish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane ma'am and uh, there is no history of change in bowel habits also ma'am for uh, occult blood loss through history i asked for uh, blood in stools or uh, blood in uh, uh while vomiting and uh, any bleeding tendencies i asked ma'am uh, i am also able to rule out uh, to an extent malignancies ma'am from history uh, hematological malignancies because the other cell lines uh, seem fine there are no bleeding tendencies ma'am so okay good your thought process is good if you ask me how would i present this the first four three four lines will be a uh, normal then i will say uh, presented with reduced activity and fe uh, uh, instead of reduced activity and fever for 15 days i will say child uh, under evaluation of pyrexia of unknown origin with anemia not in failure likely to be a congenital cause yes i will in, uh, end it this way so when you say it like that the examiner is likely to ask why are you telling it is a congenital cause okay so yes. in that case you have your sufficient uh, evidence to say sir you are you already uh, yourself told that there is no hemolysis there is no active bleeding history this anemia is not due to bleeding and infection yes it is a possibility and one more important thing is here there is a history of previous blood transfusion also that is at 18 months of age yes ma'am okay. so as we all are aware nutritional anemia is the first differential diagnosis in, in any in, uh, um, indian uh, child but uh, nutritional anemia requiring transfusion twice within 6 months of interval is goes against nutritional anemia so these are these will be your foreign against points to, to say it be a congenital uh, uh, um cause however in this case fever is there so we cannot rule out acute infection precipitating the underlying nutritional anemia so that should be your answer yes uh ashay anything you want to add no no it's fine and uh, can you go back to your negative history and uh, uh, tell why did you ask those questions and uh, rearrange if possible in a better way yes uh mom so i asked for uh, history of yellowish discoloration of uh, skin and eyes to rule out uh, hemolysis mom it will present with icterus uh i asked for history of chest pain breathlessness and swelling of feet to uh, ascertain if there's a cardiac involvement uh, either due to uh, anemia as like failure complications uh history of loss of consciousness because hypoxia due to anemia can cause uh, loss of consciousness and uh, seizure 
us also mom uh, history of re reduced urine output i asked from because uh, uh, if there's a chronic uh, kidney disease mom it can cause uh, anemia uh, in children mom uh, history of pain abdomen and altered bowel habits i asked uh, one to rule out malaria which can uh, also cause uh, fever with uh, anemia like symptoms so that will present with pain abdomen and uh, diarrhea or constipation uh, both of them were not there uh, blood or blood in vom vomit or uh, blood in stools to rule out occult blood loss mom uh, if the child is uh, passing is if the child is lo losing blood in uh, uh, vomit in stool mom uh, uh, pale stools and dark uh, urine is uh, again mom because of hemolysis that can be uh, stones causing obstructive uh, jaundice mom then uh, skin bleeds and gum bleeds to uh, rule out again mom bleeding manifest station as well as the hematological malignancies which are affecting the platelet line also uh, mom passage of uh, worms in stool hookworm remains to be a common cause of anemia so uh, if there is passage of worm in stool it gives us a cause about the etiology of anemia mom uh, drug and radiation certain drugs are uh, known to cause uh, bone marrow suppression and uh, uh, precipitate anemia mom um, and uh, certain anti-malarial drugs like primaquine chloroquine can also uh, precipitate uh, g6pd deficiency and cause uh, uh, an attack and um, chloramphenicol causes bone marrow suppression radiation also causes bone marrow suppression so that can cause anemia uh, mom weight loss night sweats and bone pain i asked uh, to uh, rule out uh, tuberculosis as well as uh, uh, malignancy mom uh, tuberculosis can present with weight Weight loss and night sweats and uh, um, bone pains and uh, weight loss night sweats can be seen in uh, leukemia as mom. Uh, consumption of inedible substances is to rule out pica mom. Uh, children might present with uh, uh, consumption of mud and chalk if they have uh, iron deficiency anemia mom. Okay, uh, we have taken a good his a good negative history. What I want to add here is, see, when you present it like that, go in an order so that the uh, examiner or the listener uh, is able to assess what you are thinking. Okay, this is little haphazard. So, uh, if I want to rearrange it, so you have here is a child with the main chief complaint of fever and anemia. So, first thing is rule out any acute causes like acute causes causing fever and anemia, infectious causes. Uh, what your history you have taken? No, all those things cough, fever, breathlessness, abdominal pain, loose stools, vomiting. All those things, any tropical infection leading to anemia and uh, fever that causes you can list out first as a negative history. Then, when you know there is one cell line is affected, then you can think of other two cell lines also. Other two cell lines means the uh, neutrophilic uh, uh, and lymphocyte component and the platelet component. Here already there is fever, so you can't ask more questions. Then you comes your uh, history of bleeding history. Okay, that is one thing. And next comes your uh, other etiological uh, 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 etiological things like uh, jaundice, hemolytic uh, uh, component, what you have ruled out, or a worm infestation and uh, other things, and uh, drug intake, radiation, all those things. And then you can rule out uh, complications, what you have mentioned, CCF. Or you can rearrange complication first and etiology uh, the last. So whatever way you can... Uh, 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 rearrange and in this case because the child has significant history of transfusion in the past that can come in history of presenting illness itself because that will make us think that it is not just the infectious cause something else something more is there rather than keeping it for a past history and saying it as a suspense so you can put it here as well yes ma'am ashray uh, oh, can you go to the first slide first slide first Before this personal uh, the demographic, bit. yeah. Over here, like what? What will the age tell you about in this age portion? You think of, uh, sir. Um, iron deficiency anemia is common in uh, all growing ages since the demand for iron increases and the iron source would have significantly reduced. Uh, 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 by two years. So, uh, thalassemia intermedia can also present uh, at uh, this age, sir. Um, and uh, infections are common in uh, all age groups, sir. But uh, at this time, uh, since the uh, HBF is reduced, I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, nutritional and thalassemia, sir. 
you can insert telling iron you can tell nutritional because even b12 as well come b12 yes, and folic acid and what will the sex of the child tell you uh, sir male uh, uh, sir male uh, boys are more uh, prone to develop uh, x linked recessive diseases like uh, g6pd deficiency sir it's more common in them and uh, sir uh, thalassemia and uh, sickle cell anemia have autosomal recessive so they're equal in both males and females and uh, sir hereditary spherocytosis is also autosomal dominant so uh, so address address is that going to tell you something so there are certain belts in uh, india where uh, 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 hemo uh, hemolytic anemias are common like sickle cell belt is there and uh, thalassemia belt is there sir but uh, this patient belongs to bangalore so uh, i can't uh, tell so you, know the community which they belong to and the regions they come from hilly regions tribal community all yes. those things fine yes sir. next uh, can you go to the antenatal natal go, yes. go. next next Over here, uh, in the neonatal history, would you like to ask something specific? You ask neonatal jaundice, right? Yes. Will sir. that help you? Uh, sir, uh, mm -hmm. if neonatal jaundice with uh, hepatosplenomegaly, I'll think of hereditary spherocytosis, sir. They present with uh, neonatal jaundice. Hemolytic jaundice is possible if the child has neonatal jaundice. Okay. Yes. yes. Next, can you go to your nutritional history slide? Yes, Yeah, dietary history, like since we are uh, talking in terms of nutritional anemia can be one of the DDs possible. I think so, you'll have to elaborate on the dietary history part a bit more. So you'll have to elaborate like zero to six months was the child exclusively breastfed. After that, since the child is still two years, till when the breastfeeding was continued, ideally it should be continued till two years. And ask about the complementary feeding pattern. Okay, because predominantly breastfed uh, child with not adequate complementary feeds, again, a child will be prone to iron deficiency anemia. And they pre present around late infancy to this stage, correct? Yes. Then even the, you have mentioned about calorie and protein deficiency. But what contributes to anemia is even the micronutrient deficiency. Correct, no? Yes. So in this case, your history taking should include, dietary history should include the child is on family diet. You should uh, explain regarding the breast feeding and complementary feeds. Then you'll have to talk about the 24-hour diet, calorie and protein, and then you talk about the dietary diversity. So you ask about the whether the child is having all types of vegetables, green leafy vegetables, and the fruits and milk and dairy products, vegetarian <coughs> diet and non-vegetarian diet. Okay, so that will tell you about the dietary diversity, which con uh, contributes to the micronutrients in the food as well. So yes. the dietary history, you'll have to elaborate a bit because we are talking we are, are also thinking in terms of nutritional anemia as one of the DDs. Yes, sir. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, I'll for the benefit of the listeners, I'll just uh, uh, list out what is the important history taking bullet points in a case of anemia. So, in the his, uh, uh, chief complaint, uh, she explained nicely decreased activity, all other things, and you'll explain the history of presenting illness, negative history, uh, um, uh, uh, complications of anemia, etiology of anemia. In etiology, the blood loss, worm infestation, any infections, and uh, uh, gut, gut blood loss, and uh, nutritional, uh, any obvious nutritional uh, uh, history you can present in the history of, uh, negative history itself, drug intake, any other. Uh, um, uh, drug intake and repeated infections all those things you can mention and complications you can mention uh, the CCF and other things you can uh, uh, take a negative history in, uh, in the history of presenting illness itself past history she has mentioned nicely history of uh, previous blood transfusion and one more thing is uh, history of any iron uh, intake that is also missing because one year six months the child had transfusion what happened after that and what was the um, workup or the diagnosis at that point was the child given any iron supplementation that will also tell us about the uh, etiology that thing in the past history 
and in a family history is very very important family history consanguinity history of blood transfusion in the sibling and the uh, other family members which community the child belongs which belt are they coming from and uh, uh, any history of splenectomy any history of uh, gallstone surgeries uh, and any history of unexplained jaundice because we know hereditary spirocytosis it's the spectrum varies right the some people will have uh, 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 transition dependency some people will have mild tinge of ja jaundice also so any ex unexplained uh, chronic jaundice history in the uh, family those things are important and in birth history birth weight because because uh, the in a young child, uh, low birth weight babies, anemia of prematurity can exacerbate if nutritionally the child is deprived. So birth weight and any history of neonatal jaundice, exchange transfusions, and any neonatal sepsis history. And if it is a preterm, whether iron was given or not uh, for first six months, those histories. And uh, developmental history is like a contributory thing we will, we will know that uh, how how the anemia is affecting the child's growth that is the contributory thing and nutritional history uh, 24 hour diet as ashray told 24 hour diet chart diet diversity micronutrient intake uh, yeah and the summary where uh, 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 where you think it is a uh, only nutritional something else is contributing that should come in your summary at least you should uh, tell your thought process, not just keeping the information in your summary. So whenever you are presenting in the, it's a tip for the exam. Whenever you are uh, presenting a case in the exam, make sure that you finish your history examination. If 40 minutes is allotted, at least in 30 minutes. So 10 minutes, you have time to think what you're going to tell. So that is more important. Your summary should be ready uh, than all other details. Yes. Asha, shall we proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, general examination. Uh, a two-year-old male who is conscious and active is examined in uh, sitting and supine position with uh, consent of mother. Vitals. The pulse rate is 94 beats per minute. It's normal in rhythm, volume, uh, character. There are no uh, delays, radio radial or radio femoral. And uh, all peripheral pulses are well felt. The blood pressure is 90 over 56 millimeters of uh, mercury, which is measured in the right arm. Uh, the respiratory rate is uh, 24 cycles per minute and the temperature is 99 degree Fahrenheit. Um, on examination, uh, the child has signs of pallor and uh, cervical lymphadenopathy is present. However, there are no signs of icterus, clubbing, cyanosis or pedal edema. Uh, in head to toe examination, uh, the head, uh, hair is normal and uh, uh, anterior fontanelle is open. Uh, the, in eyes, pallor is present. Nose is normal. No uh, bleeding is seen. In oral, oral cavity, pallor is present. There are no white patches. Uh, in tongue, uh, the tongue appears pale. Angular stomatitis is present. The neck is normal. Chest is normal. Abdomen appears distended. Bilateral small cervical lymph nodes are palpable. Uh, in uh, hands and palms, they appear pale, but the palmar creases are seen. Uh, there is no hyperpigmentation in the skin. Uh, nails, Platin IK is present, uh, genital examination is normal, and there are no other bony swellings or deformities. Uh, anthropometry, uh, the observed weight is 11 kgs and uh, expected is 12 kgs. Uh, it, the Z score is between 0 and uh, minus, uh, minus 2 standard deviation and uh, height is uh, 83 centimeters expected is 89 uh, here also the Z score is between 0 and minus 2 head circumference is 48 centimeters which is uh, expected and uh, chest circumference is 54 centimeters and chest circumference is more than head circumference the mid arm circumference is 15.5 centimeters I have uh, plotted the same. My inference is there is no signs of uh, protein energy uh, malnutrition or uh, uh, stunting. Uh, now, systemic examination, should I proceed? Yeah, yeah, proceed. 
पर एबडोम एग्जामिनेशन ऑन इंस्पेक्शन द एबडोम इज यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्टेंडेड द अम्बिलिक अपियर्स सेंट्रल एंड इवर्टेड ऑल द क्वार मूव कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू रेस्पिरेशन देर आर नो एनगॉज वेन स्कॉर्स एंड हर्नियल ऑर्फाइसिस आर ऑल्सो नॉर्मल पैल्पेशन देर इज नो लोकल राइज ऑफ टेम्परेचर देर इज नो टेंडरनेस गार्डिंग और रिजिडिटी द लिवर इज पैल्पेबल फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स बिलो द राइट कॉस्टल मार्जिन इट इज नॉन टेंडर फॉर्म इट हैज अ स्मूथ सर्फेस द मार्जिन आर वेल फेल्ड एंड देर रेगुलर द स्प्लीन इज पैल्पेबल फोर सेंटीमीटर्स बिलो द लेफ्ट कॉस्टल मार्जिन towards the right iliac fossa the spleen is firm is firm in consistency it has smooth surface and it is non tender the splenic notch was well felt uh percussion the liver span is 12 cm tympanic note is heard over the abdomen there is no shifting dullness or fluid thrill uh, auscultation all the bowel sounds are audible uh, cardiovascular system is also normal inspection the chest shape and symmetry is normal precordium is normal epical impulses visualized in the left fourth intercostal space no scars sinuses pulsation or di- uh, distended veins uh, in palpation the epical impulse was felt in the left fourth intercostal space no pulsation or thrills felt over the chest wall uh, and an auscultation s1 and s2 were heard and there were no murmurs uh, even respiratory system is normal uh, upper respiratory tract is normal um, the chest is normal no, trach- no significant the oral see go to the next week. sir there is no other significant findings in other systems sir. uh the summary uh, a two year old male toddler born to a non consanguineous uh, couple incompletely immunized belonging to lower middle class socio economic status uh, having normal development consuming um, vegetarian diet uh, deficit uh, deficient in protein and micronutrients who had presented with uh, reduced activity and fever uh, on general survey the child was pale with features of uh, with features like angular stomatitis platinakia and he also had abdominal distension the anthropometry showed no signs of protein energy malnutrition on upper abdomen examination the child has uh, hepatomegaly 4 cm below the right costal margin and splenomegaly 5 cm centimeters below the left uh, costal margin a uh, non tender firm and uh, smooth surface uh, my uh, differential diagnosis at the end of examination are iron deficiency anemia thalassemia intermedia uh, malaria and uh, hereditary spherocytosis okay shambhavi well presented uh, can you go to your first uh, thing Yes. So, in a case of anemia, when you uh, uh, see the child, a pale child, a small child, it's very important to uh, look, objectively look for any signs of failure, even though you don't have any history suggestive of that uh, uh, in the history. Pulse rate is important. My uh, anemic child will have slightly. Uh, higher pulse rate than the uh, uh, normal child but uh, disproportionate high is again suggestive of some failure and respiratory rate because it's a small child it, she may be or he may be crying during your examination but my tachypnea again tells you that the child is going in fail, uh, into cardiac failure and uh, the, why i am telling is in a opd practice you should decide whether to evaluate the child on opd uh, opd basis or you should admit the child so for that your vitals examination and the first look of the child is very very important so any signs of failure you have to admit the child and e- evaluate early and may or uh, may require or may not require the transfusion but you have to take a call whether to admit or not that is one thing while uh, it's a practical tip when you are seeing the uh, child with paler okay in the next slide ha you are beautifully uh, told head to toe examination everything you have mentioned but while presenting it's better to present the positive findings first so that the examiner knows that you have looked at all these things because you, you have highlighted all the positive things so while writing for your reference you can write everything but while telling you can tell 
all the positive things first and one more thing is the first line itself you told af is open the child is 2 year 2 months old it is in a normal child you expect af to be closed by uh, at this stage and uh, you are telling that the child has got iron deficiency uh, uh, the signs of iron deficiency also so, uh, so you have to actively look for other uh, uh, vitamin deficiency one of the common thing is rickets so if you openly tell that there was no frontal bossing and uh, uh, wrist widening the, it will uh, gives the impression that you have actively looked for it yes and uh, you tell just skin hyperpigmentation you oh, tell knuckle hyperpigmentation so that again tells you that you have kept b12 deficiency also in your mind so you have to tell your findings in such a way that your thoughts are reflected in your uh, examination findings. Yes, ma'am. And in your history and examination, there are two the two things which are little contradict to each other is. Your history tells you that uh, there is a protein energy malnutrition, even though not very significant, but there is. But in your anthropometry, it, it's almost a, a good anthropometry. Observed weight is 11 kg and your Z score also not suggestive that uh, the child doesn't have a protein energy malnutrition. So when you have a discrepancy, then you go back and check which one is correct. But when you openly tell that uh, both contradictory things the examiner might think that one of the things might be wrong so both should match yes okay go to your differential diagnosis so again here in the summary you have uh, mentioned all the information what you gathered from your history and examination so you should be telling uh, your thought process. So you had gathered information that anemia and fever with the significant past history of uh, blood transfusion at six months, uh, what, six months back, you are thinking into some congenital uh, 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 etiology and plus or minus nutritional anemia. Here in examination, you have got a history, is uh, you have got a examination findings where there is a hepatosplenomegaly also and there is a uh, obvious evidence of um, I, uh, micronutrient deficiency, that's iron deficiency anemia. That is there, that is taking your case to more towards your nutritional anemia or a chronic uh, uh, blood loss causing repeated uh, iron deficiency uh, uh, anemias. Those two uh, uh, will be your uh, DDs. Of course, this case has fever. So I think if I have present in this case at your stage, I'll keep malaria first DD yes. because acute infection is there. Again, when you put a DD, you will be asked the points for and against for your differential diagnosis. Uh, will you able to try that uh, with this in, in information, whatever you have differential diagnosis you have mentioned, uh, just try to uh, say that uh, what are the points uh, for uh, iron deficiency yes. anemia or against iron deficiency anemia? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma so my uh, points favoring iron deficiency anemia is uh, from the history level, ma'am, age. This is a growing age, so uh, increased uh, demand of iron and... Uh... So you can tell as a point wise. So, so okay. next time when you present a case in any platform, this differential diagnosis should be your main slide. Okay. Yes. So make it in the palm of the table and say for and against. Yes. Okay? yes. So that you can do. So point wise, you tell us. Yes, uh, so ma'am, the age is in favor of common age of uh, iron deficiency anemia, ma'am. At uh, history level, the uh, diet also suggests uh, decreased intake of iron, ma'am. And uh, uh, in examination, ma'am, uh, general examination, there are uh, feature, there are findings of iron deficiency anemia like uh, platinachia and uh, angular stomatitis, ma'am. And uh, uh, ma'am, though hepatospinomegaly will not be so much, ma'am, it can have mild hepatospinomegaly also, iron deficiency anemia. So that can be both point in and 
not in favor of iron deficiency anemia mom uh, other factors which are not uh, favoring iron deficiency anemia is mom he has had history of blood transfusion in uh, the past 6 months and again he is presenting with uh, iron deficiency anemia so that is uh, my points against iron deficiency anemia ma'am uh, thalassemia intermedia i can think of because uh, at uh, history level ma'am age of presentation of thalassemia intermedia is uh, again two years ma'am unlike thalassemia major which presents early on and uh, at uh, examination level uh, here there is uh, increased uh, hepatosplenomegaly which is moderate hepatosplenomegaly it uh, can be seen in uh, thalassemia intermedia ma'am uh, malaria uh, india i mean it's endemic for uh, malaria bangalore so uh, presenting anemia presenting with fever uh, i can think of infectious cause most commonly in india is uh, malaria ma'am uh, but there are no other uh, features suggesting malaria like uh, chills and rigors are not there ma'am and uh, there was no complication of malaria uh, like uh, hemoglobin urea high colored urine was not there and uh, pain abdomen was also not there ma'am and uh, the fever uh, the pattern of fever was also uh, not suggestive of malaria mom there was no um no cute uh, tertian or quadrant uh, fever mom it was just there in the morning and evening mom uh, and uh, yeah that is that is how i can uh, that's against malaria ma'am hereditary spherocytosis uh, ma'am the grade of hepatosplenomegaly is uh, suggestive of her uh, hereditary spherocytosis points against is uh, ma'am it won't present this late in life and uh, usually there is history of um, uh, jaundice at uh, uh, in uh, newborn period ma'am uh, neonatal jaundice will be there and uh, since it's autosomal dominant inheritance uh, family history is also not there which is points against hereditary spherocytosis okay so to summarize your identification anemia thalassemia intermedia and hereditary spherocytosis will not present with a chronic fever because in a summary we have told uh, mentioned the pyrexia of unknown origin 15 days of fever with, without focus so those things are against for your all other dds and uh, um, uh, for uh, infectious disease the most common is malaria uh, uh, so for fever is uh, for favoring uh, that diagnosis so other things like hepatosplenomegaly they are more common in thalassemia hereditary spirocytes iron deficiency classically will not have organomegaly that is the thing malaria again can have organomegaly so that's how you have to uh, make a table and for and again favor and favoring and non-favoring all uh, at, uh, in that pattern you have to practice and present yes so you can put it in the better way that uh, uh, infectious causes you can list out uh, things and uh, uh, chronic blood loss blood loss causes all those things and chronic anemia like congenital causes you can list out these things so that will also give more points saying that okay you have thought in lines of uh, all the direction that will uh, that will give a good impression anything yes. else Ashre? Uh, Shambhavi can you go back to vitals uh, one minute So can you see my screen? Uh, it's anthropometry slide is visible. Can you go? Sir, I'm on vital slide. Yeah, now it's visible. Child is, okay, the first slide, the general condition of the child is important because anemia can come with failure also. So if it's an active child, okay, or if the child is ill-looking, irritable, you'll have to think in terms of failure. Vitals is fine. Usually the performer goes such that you tell about the vitals, then you talk about the anthropometry, then you talk about the head to toe examination. That is how the pediatric case performer goes. So that one thing you could have corrected. And you told cervical lymphadenopathy is present. Yes, uh, if you're making that statement, then you'll have to explain regarding whether it is significant or not, because this is a child with hepatosplenomegaly. So either infection could have caused the lymphadenopathy or malignancy also will come as one of the DD. Now leukemia or lymphoma will come as one of the DDs if you have mentioned that lymphadenopathy is present because there is the child is having 
hepatosplenomegaly as well. Correct? No? Yes, sir. Mm. So you'll have to explain regarding like what, what was the like was it significant or not? No. Sir, there was only uh, one centimeter, uh, uh, one lymph node was no, present not in one of the okay. not next slide, next slide. Uh, skin, no hyperpigmentation. In the sense, you meant knuckle hyperpigmentation, right? Because yes. hyperpigmentation with few hyperpigmented patches can be seen even in Franconi anemia. So be yes. specific over there. Okay. Next, usually yes. in children of two years, you do, usually don't see the eyes. You usually look at Palmer crease for pallor. Okay. So now based on your gray, how do you grade anemia? Now, as per I am in say, that is one of the common viva questions that is asked. Uh, sir, there is a mild, moderate, and uh, severe anemia, sir. Uh, severe uh, based anemia. on IMNC. Sir, uh, IMNC, I am not sure, sir. Read so, you grade it as no anemia, some anemia, and severe anemia. And usually, children less than five years, you usually see the palmar crease for the palm for the palmar <coughs> palate for the anemia. So, you take a healthy subject which you consider it as yourself and then place the child's palm over your palm. Then compare the color. So if the palm appears paler as compared to yours, then you call it as some paler. Then you look at the, you extend the fingers and you go look at the palmar crease. If the palmar crease as well appears pale and the palm is very pale, then you call it as severe anemia. So it is no anemia, some anemia, severe anemia. That is one of the important questions that will be asked. Next slide. Yes. Anthropometry, what is the importance? Because if at all it's a chronic infection, sorry, chronic cause of that is leading to the anemia, then there will be failure to thrive. That is not present and you have not mentioned regarding wasting is present or not. Weight for height as well needs to be mentioned. Yes. What if the child had a microcephaly and short stature? In that time, what you would have thought of? Sir, Fanconi is anemia, I would have thought yeah, along. So over there, way. even the small gestational age is important in the antenatal history. Okay, so if it was the small SGA baby with low birth weight, now having short stature and uh, microcephaly, and the child might have some thumb abnormality, all those things, radius uh, bone abnormality, all those things you can think of uh, congenital anemia, like Fanconi. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, you have told hepatosplenomegaly, you know, the liver was firm, you no, know, because you mentioned in one of the family history that uh, one of the siblings uh, suffered from typhoid. Typhoid a month back. So this will fall well within the incubation period. If they've had same food and there was hepatosplenomegaly and liver is soft, spleen is soft, then we can take, take that also. So now it will be because the in on head to toe examination, child is having nutritional features also. So in that case, the child might have nutritional anemia now presenting with fever and hepatosplenomegaly, possibly typhoid as one of the DDs also we can keep. So you're sure it's, it was firm, no? Yes, sir. It felt firm on examination. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, then now, when do you term it as hepatomegaly in children? Uh, sir, uh, if the uh, the liver span is uh, more than four centimeter, uh, two centimeters, it is uh, hepatomegaly, sir, in children. No, that is not that. It is usually based on age. So if it is infants, it is between five to six point five centimeter. In one to five years age group, it is between six to seven centimeter. And in five to ten years age group, it is between seven to nine centimeter. And ten to fifteen years age group, it is between eight to ten centimeter. Okay, so this is the max uh, upper limit of the liver span. Above this, we call it as hepatomegaly. Spleen, how do you grade splenomegaly? Sir, uh, mild splenomegaly is less than 2 centimeters below the uh, left costal margin. Moderate is 3 to 7 centimeters, sir. And massive splenomegaly is more than 7 centimeters. More than 7 centimeters or it crosses the umbilicus. Yes. Fine. And then you'll have to know the methods of palpation of liver, methods of palpation of spleen and Percussion methods of percussion of the spleen. 
Yes. Okay. And so it will be asking you later. Yeah. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Go to your DD slide. I just want to add one point here, Ashray. Sorry to disturb. So when yes, you present a serious uh, uh, history in anemic child, just tell that there is no hemic murmur heard and uh, tell Gallup is uh, not seen. So so that the examiner knows that you have specifically looked for. Yes. Was the child transfused by the time? Uh, yes, sir. We had, were... had received two transfusions uh, before. Because examination. most of the times, if it is severe pallor, at least hemic murmur will be there. The examiner might end up examining and if the child has, you will lose out. So yes, sir. carefully look into it. So, sir, he had received uh, two times blood transfusion before I examined it. Next slide. Yeah, when you summarize DDs, just that you'll have to group it. So first on the line, you'll have to think of infectious cause. Then you tell it as hemolytic cause in hemolysis, whether it is extravascular or intravascular. Under intravascular, you can tell it as thalassemia, extravascular hereditary spherocytosis. And then you think in terms of nutritional, so group it, okay? So that will be better. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, with the cervical lymphadenopathy, your infection, uh, infective causes, the list goes on, like uh, malaria, rickettsia, typhoid, TB disseminated, and uh, uh, your EBB infections, everything can come present with anemia and uh, hepatosplenomegaly and cervical lymphadenopathy. So... So when you tell differential diagnosis, should the list should be bigger. So if you think broad, you will uh, tend not to miss the diagnosis. If you think very uh, biased, then you will miss on the diagnosis. It, it, it holds good for all the case presentation. Your differential diagnosis list should be full one page. Yes, ma'am. And malignancy also you could have included if there was cervical infernopathy. That also you could have considered as one of the... Sir, but it was not significant, like only one side. Yeah, one. If it was present, if it was present. Yes. Sir. If it is not significant, you better not mention because again, you will be dragging yourself into many more questions. Yes. So in real life scenarios, yes, everything matters, but uh, you will have an advantage of uh, sending investigations and take information from there and diagnose a case. For examination, exam purpose, you you have to be methodological and tell your points clearly and express your thought process clearly. That is the dictum. So you may not have a one uh, able to pinpoint diagnosis at uh, one diagnosis at, in exam, but it is not important. Examiner wants to know that uh, how how well how broad you can think about that case. That's what they are going to assess. So uh, be more focused on that. And of course, in real life scenario also, when you start practicing, th these points will help you thinking more and more differential diagnosis and thinking. As Ashray uh, told, like uh, group wise will help you in narrowing down your in investigations and interpreting the investigations. Yes, ma'am. I think uh, we are, I think we have 10 minutes more. Uh, Ashray, can we just touch upon the investigations? What investigations to be done and uh, what you expect in those investigations? Uh, ma'am, should I uh, tell the investigations? You just tell what if you are if you are a treating physician or a pediatrician for this child, what all investigation you want to send and why? Yes, ma'am. So I will start with uh, complete hemogram, ma'am, because uh, it uh, child is presenting with uh, anemia. So first thing I want to see is the hemoglobin to classify the severity of the anemia, ma'am. Uh, and along with the hemoglobin, I'll also look for uh, RBC indices, ma'am, like uh, RBC count. And uh, the MCV, MCHA and MCHC, ma'am, to uh, see the kind of anemia based on the indices, whether it's uh, macrocytic or microcytic. Along with that, I'll send a peripheral uh, blood smear to see the uh, blood picture, whether there are uh, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis and other uh, things that help me narrow down the differential, ma'am. To look for the other two cell lines, I will order uh, TLC and DLC, ma'am, to see whether the, there is uh, leukocytosis 
cases also and uh, platelet counts also ma'am to know uh, how many cell lines are uh, affected if uh, i'm thinking along the lines of uh, malignancy ma'am and uh, uh, ma'am since uh, nutritional uh, deficiency has come up as one of the differentials ma'am i'll order an iron profile ma'am to see uh, whether it is uh, iron deficiency anemia or uh, me megaloblastic anemia ma'am and uh, along with that i will also order uh, reticulocyte count ma'am um, to uh, again to differentiate between uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia and uh, beta thalassemia mom this is one of the clues mom uh, from the previous uh, rbc indices mom if we calculate the mensner's index that also gives us a clue between iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia mom if it's uh, less than 13 it points more towards thalassemia mom and uh, uh, other than that, ma'am, the red cell distribution which also can help us to differentiate between it, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, hemoglobin electrophoresis and HPLC can be done if uh, thalassemia is uh, more uh, suspected, ma'am, to see whether it's uh, the thalassemia intermedia or it's the thalassemia trait. And uh, ma'am, in uh, case of infectious etiology like malaria, ma'am, we can do a QBC uh, uh, count, ma'am, and... Uh, on peripheral blood smear also we can see the uh, parasites ma'am okay good you have listed out all the investigations and your interpretations are also good but uh, here you can put it in this way sir with the context of fever and anemia so i would like to work up for an infectious cause first so what you have listed out in your differential diagnosis, malaria, um, EBV, and uh, your rickets cell infections, typhoid infections. So all those the infectious uh, thing you can rule out first, along with CBC, complete hemogram, and peripheral smear. So you you can tailor down your further investigations based on these reports. If infections workup comes negative and your uh, peripheral smear is suggestive of any uh, uh, towards hemolysis, then you can tell that as a second line investigations, I want to do hemoglobin electrophoresis and other things to confirm thalassemia. If it is suggestive of something else, if it's suggestive of malignancy, then you will tell bone marrow examination. So while telling, you just tell, according to my investigation, uh, differential diagnosis, these are the first line investigations I'm going to uh, do. And based on the investigation, uh, the, the results, I want to take up further. So if the examiner asks you further, what you are going to uh, see in CBC, that you have beautifully explained all those things you have to mention. And one more uh, question. So uh, think that you are sitting in a, a primary health center you and uh, you see a child only coming with uh, uh, anemia, no fever and uh, uh, nutritional deficiency. Uh, so do you need uh, iron studies to uh, treat or uh, diagnose him as iron deficiency anemia? Uh, no, ma'am. I'll start with a trial dose of iron and see if he's uh, improving because... Uh... Yeah, that's it. So, these are the uh, the textbooks is uh, 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 do iron profile ferritin and everything. They are expensive and not readily available in all the um, uh, centers. Uh, when you And anemia is a... Iron deficiency anemia is one of the common. Like, NFHS 5 data says around 65% of the Indian populations are anemic. So, you don't need a ferritin you don't need iron uh, full iron profile to say or diagnose it as iron deficiency anemia so always say these are my first first line of investigations and if if possible then i would like to do all these investigations to confirm my diagnosis and proceed further yes ashray your inputs uh so yeah, first you see CBC, you confirm anemia, then you go look into the retic, uh, what other cell lines also you'll have to look at, that is a total leukocyte count and platelet to see the other cell line involvement. Then you go ahead, see the retic count, whether it is low or high. If retic count is on the lower side with microcytic hypochromic pictures, then you have the DDs of iron deficiency, thalassemia, then you have the anemia of chronic disease, all those things. And if it's on the higher side, other nutritional anemias will come into picture. And then you can confirm it with the peripheral smear. Yeah, that's all. Um, Mom, my probable diagnosis is the child has the iron deficiency anemia, uh, not in failure and no signs of malnutrition. 
okay i think uh, we have discussed about the differential diagnosis and everything in detail uh, you can add infections also into it uh, so i think we'll not repeat it again yes so uh, the take home messages are exam point of view complete your history and examination in 30 minutes uh keep yourself 10 minutes of time to write a good summary and uh, good differential diagnosis think points for favoring the differential diagnosis and against your differential diagnosis and uh, investigations at ug level they may, they may not ask you uh, very much in detail but uh, at least the first line investigation the practical tips uh, uh, I think first line investigation, second line investigations, all those things you can make a list and keep it. Yes. Interpretation of CBC itself is a one big uh, session that we can have sometimes later. Uh, any doubts, Shambhavi? Or the participants, any doubts? Sir, uh, no doubts from my end. Sir. And you told like hereditary spherocytosis, I think so it can pr present across all the age spectrum. It is not like you told unlikely in this age spectrum, no? In one of your DDs. Yes, sir. So it can present, no ma'am, like based on the severity. Yes, it can present and the same, uh, this thing, uh, phenotype, genotype variations can be there even, even within the same family. So... Usually, without jaundice, we'll not think of spirocytosis. But for undergraduate level, it's okay. Any doubts, participants? Shambhavi, you are clear? Uh, yes, sir. Are I don't have doubt? any doubts. Uh, sir, actually, one doubt was there, sir. What are the different ways of uh, percussing the strain, sir? Like, I uh, read about palpation, but uh, percussion. It was an Excel method and Cashelis method. These are the two methods of percussion of the spleen. Okay, sir. I'll read about this. Thank you, sir. So, uh, the watch is uh, non Hodgkin's kind of lymphoma a possibility. Uh, sorry, That's I didn't hear. Is non Hodgkin's lymphoma one of the possibility there was, ma'am, as doubt? So, at this stage, we can just keep it as uh, malignancy. So, acute leukemias are prevalence wise more common. So, that uh, uh, comes first. And uh, Based on the uh, DLC and other parameters, then we'll categorize whether it is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, or B or TALL. So for undergraduate level, I think they should just mention or think of malignancy in these conditions. Menser index they were asked to explain. Okay, I think Shambhavi has already answered this question. Can you repeat, Shambhavi? Yes, ma'am. So, Menzer's index we can use to differentiate between iron deficiency alemia and thalassemia. The formula of Menzer's index is uh, MCV divided by RBC count. And uh, if the MCV divided by RBC count value is more than than 13 then it points more uh, favoring iron deficiency anemia whereas if uh, the rb uh, mcv divided by rbc count value is uh, less than 13 then it points more in favor of thalassemia okay i think she has answered the question the practical tip is uh see uh both iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia will have uh, low hb and uh, low mcv so in that case you can look at the rbc count if HB and RBC count disproportionately decrease, then it is more points towards more towards iron deficiency anemia. If they are disproportionate, that means RBC count may be normal and HB is further low, that time you can think of thalassemia. It's like a practical tip. You need not by heart the Menser uh, index. Practically, we don't look at those indices very commonly because the smear will give us the characteristic picture that that is a lot of hemolytic picture anisopycolocytosis and other things that the pathologist will 
tell you that please do hb electrophoresis that kind of a classical picture the thalassemia will have and the confirmatory diagnosis is your hb electrophoresis so these indices more of a theoretical value they are important but more of a theoretical value in clinical practice um Ma'am, I had one doubt, ma'am. If after doing HPLC, we uh, find that uh, the child is suffering from thalassemia, is it uh, compulsory? And in this case, there's no family history of uh, thalassemia. Ma'am, do we have to do HPLC of the parents also to rule out carrier state? Or uh, do we just, uh, do we stop the evaluation at the child level, ma'am? So it's ideal to carry, uh, carry out HPLC of the parents, but it depends on the 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 thumb rule is that but in a family where uh, if the family is complete and the uh, parents are not going to have further kids then the evaluation may not be uh, necessary because we want to see the carrier state of the parents to decide on whether the next child is also uh, is at a risk of uh, thalassemia or not so in that context you can decide but the thumb rule is yes you have to uh, screen uh, the parents and screen the sibling also screening the sibling also might be a good idea because you can just tell them that when they grow old and have a marriageable age and at that time they can keep it in mind that they are great or whatever yes Oh, That's it with the doubts, ma'am. So, Shambhavi really well presented case. Though it, I think so, it was a really tough case for you to pile up and put it across this way because it is not a classically presenting case. So, good job. Really nicely presented. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. well thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Anusha, ma'am, for having been with us and shared your knowledge as well. And thank you, participants, as well, for being with us. Thank you. So. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.